at a military base in Belgium, an Air Force jet fuels up before taking off on a sortie. And like all NATO aircraft based in Europe, this plane benefits from extraordinary logistical assistance. It's the NATO Fuel Pipeline Network. It's made up of 10 distinct areas, the most extensive being in Central Europe. SEPS is 5,200 kilometers of pipeline fed from 13 entry points, six of which are at key ports. Le Havre is a main European gateway for tankers arriving from the Atlantic. The Compagnie Industrielle Maritime oversees the unloading, storage and onward transfer of fuel. It's a non-stop operation, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The ship docks at Le Havre and connects with the loading arms you can see behind me. Once it's connected, the pumping can begin. Because the ship's pumps are so powerful, they can transfer the aviation fuel in their tanks to the CIM facilities at rates of 5,000 cubic meters per hour for some cargoes. It can sometimes take a day to empty the hold of a tanker. The fuel is then stored and checked. Once we're satisfied about safety and the quality of the product, then pumping operations can begin. The fuel travels in these pipelines, which take it to the connection point between CIM installations and the 5,200 kilometers of the NATO European network. And just as Normandy feeds one part of the NATO pipeline, it was also where the idea for the network was born. In the summer of 1944, Allied forces made one of the most daring and famous landings in history. But once on French soil, the vast military machine needed fuel to advance off the beaches and on through Europe. British boffins and engineers came up with a work of military genius codenamed Operation Pluto. They laid an enormous oil pipeline, 130 kilometers across the English Channel, from the Isle of Wight to Cherbourg. Machine rooms on the British side pumped fuel through the pipe to ensure the Allied troop carriers, tanks and aircraft could continue their push. After NATO was formed in 1949, the pipeline grew, driven most strongly during the Cold War. And today, the system guarantees fuel supplies throughout the whole of Europe. It carries more than 13 million cubic meters a year across five countries and connects 34 fuel depots that stock more than a million cubic meters of fuel. Like the others, the NATO military depot at Brussels Airport in Belgium is underground. Protected from accidents and terrorist attack a meter below the surface, the pipeline from the port of Antwerp arrives at a reinforced concrete bunker. It gives Europe a permanently maintained and secured fuel supply network. The military are first in line for the pipeline products, but in peacetime they use less than 10% of the fuel. But that figure can be turned on its head in times of crisis. During the war in Kosovo in 1999, the NATO pipeline shifted into top gear to refuel the Alliance's intense aerial bombardment. It was a feat of logistics that was instigated in less than 24 hours. The strategic network is managed by a NATO agency called SEPMA. All nations concerned send representatives for a quarterly meeting to review how the pipeline is operating and to plan future developments. The purpose of these meetings is to reassure our clients that the basic energy supply will continue. That's our military clients, particularly at Ramstein, where the Americans take enormous amounts of fuel for their operations in Afghanistan. And also our civilian clients at Schiphol, Frankfurt, Findel and Brussels to meet their needs every day. The day-to-day -day running of the network falls to each host country. 
In Belgium, the Belgian pipeline organization watches over 800 kilometers of pipe and 14 pumping stations from a control room in Leuven. We run at 330 cubic meters per hour, but we can up that to 400 cubic meters per hour. That's equivalent to about 12 trucks. The oil tanker you normally see on the motorway contains about 30 cubic meters. That means with four lines at the same time, we'd be sending 50 trucks per hour on the road. And take into account the fact that we pump 24-7 all year round. We'd have non-stop traffic jams on Belgian roads. 90% of the fuel from the SEPS network is destined to supply NATO's civilian customers. And at the head of the list are airports like Amsterdam, Frankfurt and Brussels. At Brussels International Airport, the civilian depot is right next to the military facility. The airport has been exclusively supplied by the NATO pipeline since 1993. As you can see, the military installation is right alongside. The pipeline runs underground, of course, and eventually arrives at our meter in our installations. We've gained flexibility and certainly security. At Brussels Airport, the refueling of all 350 aircraft that pass through each day comes via the SEPS pipeline. The supply is supervised by the company Hydrant Refueling System. This is the end of the line. The kerosene has at last reached the plane. Our job ends at the tarmac. Handling companies take over from there. In this case, it's Sky Tanking who's providing the final link to this jet. At this airport alone, more than 18 million passengers take to the skies over Brussels each year, powered by aviation fuel delivered through the NATO pipeline network.